Where were you the night of September 25th? The night Bob Sherman was killed. So, Marco, Shepard, where are you guys on yours? The crime scene is clean. No weapons, no prints, no witnesses. All I need is one little speck of blood. When you have the real people, you, you know, you have a tremendous resource for your actors to go to. We had uh, forensics people come in to talk to Cameron Mannheim. And another guy uh, with the Marine unit, Danny Lopez, uh, who took us out on the boats and took us all over the bay. Bruce Maravich, who was a lieutenant in the homicide division for many years. Bruce was on the set all the time, and we would often say, is this right, Bruce? Is this how it's really done? When I read the script, I was attracted to the fact that it was a female homicide inspector. Not only does she have to confront the problems of the murder, but she also has to confront some of the problems within the police force itself. Here's a tip for you. A stumbling on a suspect is not an inspector make. Good luck, honey. I happen to know someone on the San Francisco police force who is almost the real life character uh, that this could have been based on. Hey, the first female chief of police in San Francisco right here. Mark my word. Oh, yeah. Yeah. My name is Maureen D'Amico. I'm a police inspector with the San Francisco Police Department, and I'm assigned to investigate homicides. In 1973-74, the police department was hit with a federal lawsuit to open up its hiring to minorities and women. So it was somebody telling me I couldn't do something, and my personality saying I'm going to do it to prove you wrong. Out of my way, Macho. When I actually entered the academy, it was a whole new world that I was ready to explore, and I knew exactly what I was getting into. I knew it wasn't going to be easy. There were men that were ready to give the women a chance, and there were men that wanted no part of us. I never backed away from a, from a fight, from being right next to my partner. And the minute you showed that part of your personality, word spread very quickly throughout the station you were working at. And they'd say, hey, D'Amico's ready to get in there and, and do her half of the job. You don't have to worry about her freezing on you or running away from a situation. There was never a time, never a time, that I wanted to quit. Yes. Hey. The work of an inspector is the investigative detail or bureau of the police department. The radio cars are always the first responders. When they get specifically to a homicide, they basically shut down the crime scene, and then homicide is called out. We are the directors of the homicide scene. We'll identify what evidence we want picked up, what photographs we want taken. Give me a photo here, close up of the cigarette burn. And we are totally in charge of the case and the investigation from that moment on through the court process. All right, it's yours. I met Phil Kaufman at his office when they, I guess, were interviewing me to see if I wanted to do the work and if I had enough to offer to them. And he was just wonderful. Uh, he immediately accepted one of my changes to his script. The initial one was they wanted Jessica Ashley to be, as we say, juiced into homicide because her godfather was a high-ranking uh, official in the police department, which is Samuel L. Jackson. And I just shook my head and I said, please don't do that to her character, that the women of San Francisco have fought so hard to, to earn their place, to get their positions in the rightful manner, the same way the men have. And if you make a movie where she's given special treatment, you'll set us all back 50 years. And he just smiled at me and said, we'll change it. My role for Ashley's part and Andy Garcia's was to make sure that when they responded to a scene, they handled it as a homicide inspector would handle it. There's the cigarette burn. It's our gun. OK, let's get him out. When I met with Inspector Maureen, um, it gave me a little bit more confidence because she's just in appearance and demeanor an ordinary woman. Do you know, when we think of inspectors as being so clever and intense and sleuthing and capable really of, of very mighty feats of solving mysteries, you know? And to just see that she was a regular lady was helpful. So I thought, okay, I, I really can do this and now I have a way in and, you know, I don't have to try to be something spectacularly that I am not. She's 
a mother, and then she goes to work and she suits up and puts on that bulletproof vest and solves murders. I mean, it's really kind of extraordinary. It was fun to watch somebody play what I do in real life. Ashley was extremely generous with her time. She was very methodical and very deep about my thought process and how do you prepare yourself and what do you think of? And I just kind of cracked up laughing. And I, she looked at me and I said, Ashley, I sing to the oldies when I <laughs> respond to a homicide scene. Because if you try and prejudge what you're going to get into, it could narrow your focus and narrow your thoughts of what possibly could have happened. So I like to keep an open mind and singing to the oldies does that for me. I'd like to talk about your parents. My parents are dead. They were killed in a car crash. Now that's what you tell people. I'm the director of police psychology for the San Francisco Police Department. Typically I work with officers that are sort of immersed in trauma. As law enforcement officers, you see a lot of terrible things. Cops have a sort of a very primitive idea of psychology. Some officers think that psychology is all BS. I mean, 30 years ago, when I first came on the department, people drank themselves to death. They literally drank themselves to death. And uh, we put away officers, fired them, disciplined them. That didn't work. What they need is they need to use treatment. People can do horrible things in a blackout. You go to the prisons, and a lot of people who have done a lot of horrendous things do not remember their crime. It's really similar to this character. You don't know, is this person having some sort of amnesia kind of effect or some sort of traumatic repressed behavior? Or are they self-medicating with alcohol? Are they lying about the blackouts? They're just using it as some way of uh, not being responsible for their behavior. I know you. You're me. That's the journey we're going to have to take, find out what's going on. Any nightmares? Anxiety? Panic attacks? Nothing. During the course of the film, I worked with Ashley Judd. We went over some of the responses a person may make in therapy. Um, we looked at her posture, how she sat, uh, her quickness of the response, and how she, um, how she focused on the therapist. You know, for someone who's supposed to understand people, you're a little slow on the uptake. As the therapist is probing Ashley, um, she responds back as he, as he gets closer to her nerve. Um, and that's very realistic. You know, we don't know, is it the, is her response back because she's the murderer, or is it because of ongoing things in her life, or her history? David Strathairn was my counterpart in the movie. He really wanted to make sure that, would you do this this way? If they said this, would you say that? What would be an appropriate way of dealing with this? A lot of times what we see in movies is just fiction run wild. This is a psychological thriller, a mystery. I can hear your heart beating. And it unravels just like psychology unravels. You don't know all the facts. And as you go through it, you find more, more information. That's how a mystery works, but that's also how psychology works. I really liked how that happened. I liked the attention to detail. Um, I liked the honesty. And I think that this film may be on some levels a model for police psychology. There's a man sitting at the end of the bar. It looks like he's been sitting there for a while. I want you to describe him, and I want details. Uh, it's incredible when you meet these people. I mean, you realize how smart and savvy they are. You feel safe in a strange way, knowing that there are smart people of, you know, of goodwill who are out there trying to solve crimes. White male, late 40s, six foot, 200 pounds, thinning gray hair, glasses. He's wearing two gold chains with some sort of medallion. He's uh, drinking shots and paying cash. Hmm. And that's why she's an inspector and you're not.